All season tires. All season tires are a tire that claim to offer everything in one package, but does the perfect tire exist? The one tire to rule them all. I'm gonna have a look at why people should be thinking about fitting all season tires, and then my seven favorite all season tires of 2018. Segway. This is a summer tire. This is an all season tire. The tires you're driving on probably look like this. And most people think they're all season tires because that's what everyone in the UK drives on all seasons, but they're not. This is a summer tire. You can see very smooth tread pattern, big central ribs for water dispersion, but nothing to cut through snow and ice and no block packing. This is an all season tire. This has sipes, it has the deeper V pattern grooves which pack in snow. And this is the tire that will work in snow and ice. The difference between this and this has been proven many times. I will link a video below. This won't get you up a gradual incline. This will get you to the top of Everest. Ish. First up, you should probably understand the perfect all season tire just doesn't exist. Sadly, we don't have the technology to make a tire that works excellently in the dry and wet and really well in snow and ice. Now, going back a few years, some of the less scrupulous manufacturers simply put an all season sidewall on a winter tire. So your all season tire was essentially a winter tire. Fortunately, manufacturers, especially the premium manufacturers, have got a lot better at making a tire that works in most conditions, but still doesn't quite have the peak optimum grip of a summer and winter package. The main compromise of any tire designed to work in snow ice is unfortunately dry grip, which has led me to coin the phrase, the dry snow ice, but the dry, the dry, dry snow and ice, the dry, dry ice, the, the balance between the dry performance and the snow performance the manufacturer has to make. Unfortunately, because these little cuts in tires called sipes, which are essential for snow and ice performance, that means the tire in the dry has a much harder time giving an equal pressure of grip to the surface and it's just got less rubber on the ground. So the dry performance, especially braking, does suffer. Fortunately, the premium manufacturers have got a lot better at mitigating this. So a modern all season tire, and particularly one, is very good in the dry, but not quite as good as a summer tire still. And the tire that's good in the dry isn't quite as good as snow and ice as the other all season tires. It's a bit of a conundrum. That said, the advantages an all season tire brings to your life are twofold. First up, it's safe year round motoring. That means if you get caught in a freak snowstorm, you're not gonna get stuck. I mean, you're probably gonna be stuck in the traffic because some kid in his rear wheel drive BMW has tried to get up a really tiny snowy incline and just got stuck and sideways, but you'll be safe in the knowledge you're not that idiot. Also, it means twice a year, you don't have to change your tires. That means you don't have to store them anywhere or don't have to have a second set of wheels and don't have to handle all these tires. <laughs> I don't know where to keep these. So there are good reasons why all season tires are an excellent choice for the more casual motorist. It's also worth remembering while we're talking about all season tires, it's not just about snow and ice. All season tires have a softer, more elastic compound. It's got a higher percentage of silica. That means at lower temperatures, the rubber doesn't harden up like it does in the summer tire. And even around freezing conditions in the dry and wet, you should have a noticeable improvement. The tire manufacturers like to use this seven degree number for the crossover point. Personally in testing, I find that's a little bit high. It's probably more two to four degrees. Most people tend to change their winter tires over in October and back in February. But with an all season tire, you don't have to. I love all these. So now we understand that an all season tire is designed to be left on your car year round and can help you in cold, particularly snowy and icy conditions. But there could be some compromise in the dry performance across the summer. Let's look at what I consider to be the seven best all season tires in 2018. Before I start my recommendation, I'm gonna give you a little reminder please subscribe and maybe hit the bell icon. Subscriptions aren't a big thing to you, but they're huge to me. I'd really appreciate the subscription. Because tires are never simple, my best pick recommendation isn't gonna be simple either. Instead of one, I have three. We have this, the Michelin Cross Climate, this, the Continental All Season Contact, and this, the Goodyear Vector Four Season Generation Two. Which of these three tires should you pick? Well, it depends on your personal and fundamental driving style, where you live in the country and what you want to do with the tire slash what you want from the tire. If like me, you live in the south of the UK where snow's a rarity, you probably don't see too many extreme conditions like you might in the north of the country and you're not going to take your car skiing to the Alps, not skiing on the car obviously, you know what I mean. The Michelin cross climate's the tire to be on. Somehow Michelin have made an all season tire that almost matches a summer tire in the dry. God knows how. You'd think with the dry snow, ice, ice, bad snow, the, the dry and snow balance, you'd think they'd have compromised the snow quite heavily to get it near the summer tire in the dry, but they haven't. Somehow, this is also excellent in the snow. Way better than the summer tire. Maybe not quite as good as these two, but way, way better than the summer tire. Where it might fall down a little bit is ice performance, but 
for me, that's not a problem. If, perhaps, you live further north in the country, because not everyone's in London, and you do see more snow and ice, this is the tyre you want to be thinking about. It's the Goodyear Vector 4 Season Gen 2. Now, this tyre is brilliant as a wet, dry, snow, even balance. What it's done, it's a little bit further away the dry performance of the Michelin Cross Climate, but it will match it in the wet and slightly beat it in the snow and definitely beat it in the ice. So, what you've got here is a very all season, all season tyre, if that makes sense. Whereas the Michelin is quite a dry bias all season, this is a proper all season. And the third tyre I'm recommending, sitting in between these two, is the Continental All Season Contact. Why is it sitting in the middle? Well, I think Continental originally designed it to sit in the middle of the dry and snow performance of these two tyres. So it would have some good summer performances like the Michelin Cross Climate, but also be really good in the snow and ice. I think looking at the early tests, this tyre is a little bit more towards the Goodyear than it is the Michelin, but it's still an excellent tyre. Now, this is only my third of the three first, not that that makes sense, because this is the only tyre of the three I've not got personal experience on, and it's been in very limited tests. So if you are thinking about this tyre, and there's no reason not to, make sure you pop over to tyreviews.co.uk to have a look at all the latest tests it's been featured in, because there'll be more in the coming months. As you might have noticed, these three tyres here I've mentioned, they're premium tyres, and while premium tyres are often the best tyres, they come at a cost. Quite literally, they're all very expensive. If you don't want to spend that much, or you're looking for something on a little bit more of a budget, I'm not going to recommend a budget tyre, but there are some other options from very well-respected manufacturers which you should consider for all-season motoring. First up on my list of slightly cheaper all-season tyre recommendations is this. It's the Redstein Quattrack 5. Now, this tyre has been out a little bit longer than the rest, and if you notice something different about the tread pan, it's the only asymmetric tyre here. What this does mean is if you look at the European tyre test this is featured in, it doesn't normally score that well, but it gets really heavily downgraded because of its snow and ice performance. And there's a reason the other tyres are directional, it's because that works for snow and ice better. Now this tyre, where it does perform, is the dry and wet. And what do we see in the UK a lot of? Dry and wet, especially wet. So this is definitely one to consider should you be looking for an all-season tyre for the UK. Next up is this, the Nexon N Blue 4 Season. Now this tyre is the cheapest tyre test, but that doesn't mean it's not a good tyre. It actually won the ADAC all-season tyre test earlier this year and came fourth in the Auto Express tyre test last year. So, an excellent value tyre. This, this is the Nokian Weatherproof. Remember me talking about the dry snow ice balance performance earlier and how the Michelin Cross Climate pushes it more towards the dry, the Goodyear's somewhere in the middle. This, this is down the winter snow and ice end. So, I don't really think the Nokian weatherproof is particularly suitable for the UK climate, unless you're planning on spending a lot of time in the snowier parts of Europe. But if you're one of my European viewers, definitely check out the Nokian. Unfortunately as well, the Nokian is quite expensive in the UK compared to some of the other options. So yeah, definitely one if you live in Europe. Last up in my recommendation of all season ties is a real alternative one. It's this, the Continental Winter Contact TS860. Now, this is a good example of how a winter tyre can work as an all-season tyre because when it's been put in an all-season tyre test as the reference winter tyre, it's actually been more all-season than some all-season tyres. Think of this as having a balance of quality similar to the Goodyear Vector 4 Season Gen 2. So somehow Continental have made a winter tyre that works really well in winter, especially on ice, but also incredible in the dry and wet. Don't know how they've done it. It's like magic. There's a couple more options I can't yet talk about because they're brand new and I haven't seen them in any tests or driven them myself. But there's new all season tires from Bridgestone, Hankook and Falcon. Now Bridgestone, big with the A001, their old, old, old season tire, which was actually excellent at the time. So probably worth looking into the new, the A005. And Falcon and Hankook are both making class leading tires at the moment. So if for whatever reason, any of these six or seven don't tickle your fancy, head over to Tire Reviews and have a look at the reviews for the new ones because in the coming weeks, they'll be coming out in various group tests. So there you are. That's my top six all-season tires and one special all-season tire. The keen of you will have noticed one thing. There's no budget recommendations and that's for a very good reason. All-season tires are the most difficult tire type to get right and like budget winter tires, which can be really good in snow and ice to be fair, they're terrifying in the warmer, wetter conditions, which we do get over winter. So don't think a budget all-season tire is a good choice. It's not. It's going to be compromising your safety, especially in the warmer, wetter conditions we so often get in the UK. So to round up, if you are going to fit an all-season tire, just remember they are a slightly compromised product still. They're not the perfect tire. If you want optimum year-round motoring, if you're experiencing really hot conditions and really cold conditions, a summer and a winter tire is still the best combination. But 
modern premium all-season tyres do offer a good compromise for the smaller cars that maybe see city and lesser country driving. It's also worth remembering that as the all-season tyre tread depth wears, the tread blocks get stiffer and stiffer and the sipes run out, which means the snow and ice performance decreases. Noticeably, it falls off dramatically at three millimetres, which means if you are running all-season tyres, try and run the newer tyres into autumn, winter, spring, and then wear them down in the summer and fit a new set come October, because sub three mil, they're not gonna be that much better than the summer tyre and snow and ice. If you've enjoyed this video or found it useful, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. As I mentioned earlier, I'd really appreciate a subscription. I'm only putting out about 10 videos a year, so I'm not gonna be spamming your YouTube, but it would mean a lot to me and help me get support for more tyre related content. The next videos will be crazy exciting and they're already shot and edited, so I'm not actually lying about this, like the Michelin one, which took a year and a half to do. The next video out will be four wheel drive on summer tires versus two wheel drive on winter tires. And we've done loads of different testing. So that's a really exciting and interesting video because how many times in the UK do you hear, oh, don't worry about winter tires, just get a four wheel drive. Well, I'm gonna prove that. Maybe right, maybe wrong. You're gonna have to watch. As always, questions in the comments below. I try my best to answer every single question the best I can. For any further information on the tyres featured, or you just want some more tyre general information, head over to tirereviews.co.uk. That's the website that powers this channel. It's got tens of thousands of pages of tyre information on there. And if you've got any questions that I can't answer below, or you might not want to ask below, just look at the website. It's probably answered them. And as always, happy motoring and enjoy your all season tyres.